Hello friends, welcome to the first video for the lecture series on RCC design using IS456 2000 in Microsoft Excel. In this video, we are going to discuss on design of simply supported singly reinforced beams using IS456 2000. So the first step is you need to assume certain basic data. For example, uh, you need to assume width of the beam. So here we have assumed width of the beam as 230 mm. Generally, weight of the beam uh, is assumed equal to the width of the ball, a ball. Then uh, we have taken clear span of the beam as 3.7 meters. Weight of the support here is 300 mm. Grade of concrete is M20 grade concrete, that is at 20 newton per mm square. Fy, that is grade of steel, is 4.5 newton per mm square. Clear cover uh, we have assumed as 30 mm. Superimposed load. Uh, let's say it is 17 kilonewtons per meter. So here the superimposed uh, load is the characteristic load that is the unfactored load we have taken. Uh, we have assumed 4 bars of 12 mm dia. Now in order to calculate the effective depth of the beam, we need to assume D by B ratio. So here we have assumed D by B ratio as 1.8. We can assume any value between 1.5 to 3. So from that we can get the effective depth provided that is your d by b ratio multiplied by the width of the beam that is a 230 mm. So we will get it as 414 mm. So once you get the effective depth you can easily calculate the overall depth of the beam that is your effective depth plus clear cover plus die of bar by 2. So we get the overall depth of the beam as 450 mm. Next step is you need to calculate the effective span of the beam. So here we know that for a simply supported beam the effective span is given by the minimum of center to center distance and clear span plus D. So here the center to center distance is the clear span plus width of the support. So here width of the support is in mm. So you have divided the value by 1000 so we get the center to center distance as 4 meters. L plus D that is a clear span plus D that is clear span is a 3.7 plus provided depth that is a 4 and 4 mm again it is in mm so we have divided it by 1000 so we get the L plus D as 4.114 meters so L effective we can easily find by using the minimum function so it is minimum of center to center distance and L plus D so we get as 4 meters next step is we need to regulate the factored bending moment and shear force now we all know that for a simply supported beam the factored bending moment and shear force is given by WL square by 8 and WL by 2 respectively. So first we need to calculate the factored load. So factored load is nothing but the superimposed load plus shelf height of the beam multiplied by 1.5. So before that we need to calculate the shelf height of the beam. So shelf height of the beam is nothing but width of the beam into overall depth of the beam into 25 that is your grade of concrete and width and depth are in mm so we have divided both by 1000 that is overall by 10 to the power of 6 so we get the shelf weight of the beam as 2.59 kN per meter so you can calculate the factored load that is a 1.5 times superimposed load plus shelf weight of the beam and after calculating the factored load we can easily calculate the factored bending moment and shear force now we will design the singly reinforced beam for this bending moment and shear force the fourth step is we need to calculate certain design factors. So first factor we need to calculate is x u max by d ratio. So x u max by d is given by 700 divided by 1100 plus 0.87 fy. So putting all these values here fy is here 415 newton per mm square we get x u max by d is 0.48. Next is we need to calculate q limiting. So q limit is given by 0.36 into x u max by d into 1 minus 0.42 x u max by d into f c k. So putting all this value we can get q limit. Now we need to calculate the effective depth required for a balanced section. So effective depth required for a balanced section is given by square root of m u divided by q limit into b. So putting the value we get the balanced depth as 304.5 mm. Now the effective depth that is provided by us that is here 414 mm so effective depth provided here is 414 mm please note here that the effective depth provided should be always more than the balanced depth because we are designing under reinforced section 
and to ensure that our section is an under reinforced section the provided depth of the beam should be always more than the balanced depth because at the max we can design the balanced section but we are, we are uh, restricted to design over reinforced section because over reinforced section is not permitted as far as 456-2000 so here the provided depth is more than the balanced depth so it is ok so now we will calculate the PT required so the required percentage of steel that is your 50 FCK by FY 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4.6 MU divided by FCK BD square so putting all the formulas we get the PT limit uh, sorry PT required as 0.46 percentage next we will calculate the PT limit that is your 0.36 by 0.87 into FCK by FY into X max by D into 100 so we will get the PT limit as 0.96% now we will calculate the AST required so here AST required we know that it is equal to PT required into BD into uh, PT required into BD divided by 100 so you get AST required as 434.46 mm square then we will calculate the limiting area of steel that is your AST limit which is nothing but PT limit into BD divided by 100 so we get as 909.76 mm square next we will calculate the area of steel provided so here we have provided 4 bars of 12 mm diameter so AST provided will be nothing but 4 bars multiplied by area of 1, one bar that is here pi by 4 into dia square so pi is nothing but 3.14 into dia square that is here 12 into 12 into uh, divided by 4 so we get the area of steel provided as 452.16 mm square the area of steel provided should be more than the required area of steel but it should be less than the area of limiting area of steel so here what we have done is we have uh, used AND loop inside the IF loop and here we have used two conditions that is these two conditions must be satisfied that is your AST provided should be more than the AST require, required and at the same time the AST provided should be less than the AST limit if this condition is satisfied then the excel will display the message as ok or else it will display the message as not ok so here the AST provided is more than the AST required so it is ok next we will calculate the PT provided that is a percentage of steel provided that is nothing but AST provided divided by BD into 100 so we will calculate we will get the PT provided as 0.47 percentage next we will calculate the limiting moment of resistance that is MU limit so MU limit formula is Q limit into BD square so Q limit we have calculated just now that is a 2.76 into BD square B is here 230 into D square that is here 414 square so we will get the moment of resistance as 108.62 kN meter so here the applied moment is here 58.76 kN meter which is less than the MU limit so we can design this beam as a singly reinforced beam if in case the MU is more than MU limit then we have to revise the section or we have to go for doubly reinforced beams so next step is the design of shear reinforcement now what we uh, do is a conventional method in IS456 given is that we use this table to calculate the tau C value that is a design shear strength of concrete so for example uh, let's say our percentage of steel is uh, 0.50 percentage so we can uh, we directly get the tau C value as 0.48 Newton per mm square for example if the PT is 0.3 then we have to interpolate between 0.25 to 0.50 so we can get the tau C value accordingly but this method is a little cumbersome method so we are uh, going by the empirical approach so what we are doing is we are using this empirical formulas to calculate tau c value based on this empirical formula only this table of IF, IS456 is designed so we can use this formula so here tau c is here given by 0.85 into square root of 0.8 fck into square root of 1 plus 5 beta minus 1 divided by 6 beta but before calculating tau c we need to calculate this factor beta so this beta is given by 0.89 fck divided by 6.89 pt so that is your 0.8 
FCK divided by 6.89 PT. Here PT is here, PT provided. So you get the beta value as 4.89. So you can get the tau C value by using this formula. So you get the tau C value as 0.47 Newton per mm square. Now if you calculate the tau V value, that is your VU upon BD. So that is your VU is your applied shear force, that is your 58.76 kN. Multiply by 1000 to convert the kN into Newton and divided by B into D. B is a 230 mm and D provided is a 415 mm. So we get the tau V value as 0.62 Newton per mm square. So if your tau C is more than tau V, then it is okay, but we need to provide the minimum shear reinforcement. And if your tau V exceeds the tau C value, then it is not okay and we have to design for shear reinforcement. So here the tau V is not tau is more than tau c so we need to design for shear so let's say uh, we are assuming uh, 6 mm dia of stirrups 250 megapascal grade and we are uh, using two legged stirrups so first of all we will calculate the area of stirrups that is given by the number of legs into pi by 4 into dia square so we get the area of stirrups as 56.52 m square Next is we need to calculate the spacing of stirrups. So spacing of stirrup is given by this formula that is 0.87 Fy ASV divided by B times of tau V minus tau C. So putting the value in the formula that is a 0.87 into Fy is here. 0.15 sorry uh, here you have to use Fy is nothing but the Fy of stirrups, not the Fy of main bar. So here Fy is here 250 into ASV divided by B times of tau V minus tau C. So here we get the spacing as 360.13 around 360 mm center to center. In any case, this spacing should not exceed the maximum spacing of shear reinforcement as per IS 456-2000 given in the clause 26.5.1.5. So it should not exceed the 0.75 D, it should not exceed 300 mm and it should not exceed the spacing for minimum shear reinforcement that is a 0.87 Fy ASV upon 0.4 D. So putting all these values we are getting these minimum uh, maximum values. So here the 360 mm is exceeding all the values. So here we will provide minimum of all the spacing that is your minimum of 360 mm, 310 mm, 300 mm and 133.62 mm. So here we, are, uh, we will use the minimum of all spacing but what we do usually is for example your minimum spacing is 133.62 mm so we generally provide 130 mm center to center. So we have used the floor function uh, to round down the value to the next multiple of 10. Now we'll uh, check for deflection. So uh, as per IS 456-2000, to satisfy the deflection criteria, the L by D actual should be less than the L by D permissible. So now the L by D permissible is given by 20 into modification factor as per IS 456 given on page number 37. So here uh, to calculate the modification factor, first of all we need to calculate the FS value. So FS value is given by 0.58 FY into AST required divided by AST provided. So that is nothing but 0.58 into AST required by AST provided that is a 434.46 and 452.16 we can get the FS value. So from the FS value we uh, can easily calculate the modification factor from the graph given on page number 38 of IS 456-2000. So we get the modification factor as 1.1. So we can calculate the L by D permissible that is nothing but 20 into modification factor that is 20 into 1.1 which is equal to 22 and L by D actually is L is the clear span that is here 3.7 meter and D is the 414 mm so L by D actually is 8.93 which is well below the L by D permissible value so our beam is okay for deflection Next we need to check for development length. So your development length is given by 47 times of die of bar. 
so uh, development length for m20 grade concrete is given in this table that is for fe415 grade uh, the development length is 47 times of dia so that is 564 mm uh, this development length uh, should be not should not exceed 1.3 m1 by v plus l0 so here uh, we need to calculate m1 there is a moment of resistance uh, to calculate m1 we need to calculate x u value so x u value is given by 0.87 fy ast divided by 0.36 fck b so we can calculate x u value from that we will calculate the m1 that is a 0.87 fy ast multiply by d minus 0.42 x u so we can cal calculate the moment of resistance and uh, this v is nothing but the factored shear force so v we have taken as the factor shear force that is a 58.76 kN and your L0 is nothing but maximum of D or 12 phi so D is here effective depth and 12 times of die of bar so die of bar is here 12 mm so whichever is maximum that is the value of L0 so L0 is here 4.414 mm so putting all these values in this formula there is here 1.3 m1 by V plus L0 we get the value as 1759.67 mm so uh, this value is more than the development length provided so it is ok so we have completed the design of singly reinforced beams this is a design summary that is we have used uh, 230 mm width of the beam and the overall depth of beam is 450 mm we have provided 4 bars of 12 mm dia and in order to anchor this bottom bars uh, we, uh, we need to provide two bars of 10 mm dia uh, for proper anchorage and we have provided six bar uh, six dia two leg stirrups at 130 mm center to center with an effective depth of 414 mm so this completes the design of singly reinforced beams in excel uh, let's say uh, superimposed load let's say we make it as 40 kN per meter so if the superimposed load is 40 kN per meter then uh, MU is more than MU limit so we cannot go for singly reinforced beams so we need to go for doubly reinforced beams so in the upcoming videos uh, we will design uh, each and every beam that is a doubly reinforced beams, cantilever beams, continuous beams we will design slabs, columns, coatings all in excel so uh, if you like this video then please subscribe to my channel and uh, uh, press the bell icon and share as much as possible thank you